Welcome to Inspired by Faith, the program of the Columbus Catholic Women's Conference. This is a show to help you be inspired by our Catholic faith, live out the gospel message, and deepen your relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm Michelle Fanley, and I'm joined each program in the studio with my dear friend, Emily Jaminette. We hope this show provides an uplifting 30 minutes to help refresh your soul and strengthen your faith. As it was born out of our friendship, we hope it encourages you to deepen and develop spiritual friendships with your sisters in Christ. So welcome, Emily. Hello, and I'm super excited about today's topic. (laughs) Emily, you say that every single time. I know. I'm going to get you a new line. Okay, well, the truth (laughs) is we're going to be talking about spending less and living more. And when you have seven kids... You're you, you got to tackle. Yeah, you the do got to be excited about this topic because it is important and um, and a, a part of our faith. We know using our time and talent and treasure well, and we are really delighted to have a fabulous guest with us today, Sam Fatsinger, who um, we actually were honored to meet. She happened to be coming to town from Maryland, and uh, she was driving her kids to the CYSC. And we connected early in the summer and had a lovely poolside chat. And she even stopped and got us some awesome thrift store treats, some uh, awful, awesome game of Racco my kids still play. And uh, we had a wonderful visit. So we had to share her wisdom with all of our listeners. So Sam and her husband, Rob, um, are the parents of 14 and the grandparents of seven, whose financial success story has been featured in publications, including the Washington Post, Marketplace.org, Epic Pew, Alatea, the Oakland Press, and the Daily Mail, as well as um, Girlfriends and EWTN Weekly. And she, they were just on At Home with Jim and Joy. And Pam is the principal of the St. Peter the Rock Homeschool Tutorial and is involved in her parish, family, and retreat as, as a homeschool coordinator. And she and her husband, Rob, live in Bowie, Maryland. Am I saying that right, Sam Bowie? Thank you so much. It is Bowie, Marilyn, like David Bowie, but I'm very excited to get to be talking to you since I tracked you guys down when I was in Ohio and you took your precious time to meet with with me and help mentor me in this new path of this first book in our life. So I appreciate that and I'm so happy to get to talk to you with you. Well, we are so honored to have you on the show today. And I shared a little tiny bit in our bio, but can you share um, with our listeners a little bit more about yourself and your family? So I'm the mom of 14. I gave birth to 12. We adopted number 13, and we have been fostering number 14 since he was born. He just had his fifth birthday on August 1st, and we hope that we can adopt him someday. So prayers would be appreciated for that. We have been living debt-free and trying to maintain a debt-free lifestyle, which was kind of always the way we lived. And we didn't realize it was a big deal until about uh, five or six years ago when the Washington Post found out that our kids were graduating college debt-free. So they made a big deal deal about it, put this article about us in the Washington Post magazine, and our story kind of went viral. Again, just feeling like, you know, regular old folks doing the best we can with the money God's given us. We didn't realize what a big deal it was until then Ave Maria Press contacted us, asked us to write a book, and it's just been a really neat adventure since then, and my husband and I love sharing our story for no other reason than to help other families. I think that what's really fun about your faith is, you know, we've all picked up those guides for, you know, on how to spend less and how to get on a budget and how to go about doing things. But the fact that you tie in the Catholic faith and really prayer and spirituality is, um, to me, is really special. Maybe you could talk about, you know, that connection between praying, discerning and purchasing. Yeah, we just feel like it's our responsibility. Uh, God gave us this money, and through our stewardship, it's his, and so we need to give it back to him. And it's been a blessing, again, not realizing this wasn't really any certain plan. My husband and I tell everybody it was just survival. And our plan was to do the will of God and to be open to whatever that will was, whether it was, you know, having another baby or moving or finding another job. We've kind of just put 
every day in his hands, we kind of have this, you know, mantra, I will be done. And, you know, with all those children, every year, every season, they all brought about new challenges, new hopes, new dreams, new goals. So if we can help families, whether it's every year or, you know, whenever a new baby or a new job comes about in their life, if we can help them manage that opportunity to say, okay, God gets what's first and pray about what his will is with maybe your kid's schooling or to have or not to have another child or working in the home or out the home. I think the only good thing that's come from this whole COVID <laughs> crazy time is that the world has seen that we can be creative with workplace. And I have seen so many um, families figure out ways to work their schedules, either working from home, having kids doing online school or homeschool or whatever it is to make it work, you know, Zooming and all the things. I think that we have all kind of reevaluated our priorities. And another big thing, which, you know, doesn't sound like it's a financial advice, but I think we also learn to simplify our lives. We learned that we actually can do without all the activities and all the running around. I've seen a re rejuvenation of family meals and family time because there was no soccer practice to go to. There was no piano lessons to go to. There was no after school activities. So I, I kind of grasp on those positive things that came from this time. But if you really think about it, it's, those things did cost money and they do we did save money in the sense that, you know, we weren't paying for sports. We weren't paying for other activities. We weren't spending money on gas driving all over the place. We weren't spending money on fast food restaurants, picking up, you know, before practice, after games, you know, traveling, all those things. So in a way, simplifying our lives does simplify our budget. Amen. That's what I have said over and over again about this time is really that the simplification. I love you also said in your book, you know, you can also realize that extra money taught us that certain things are not necessary for a happy and abundant life. And I know so many of us think that, you know, if I only had more money, if I only had this job that we will be happier, but you do a nice job tying in in the book how that doesn't quite, you know, equal one another. Can you share a little bit more about that? Well, I say a lot. Uh, everybody has money problems. We either have too much, too little, or we have it and we don't know what to do with it. So when you give to God your first, your first fruit, fruits, whether that's tithing or finding a special ministry, you know, once you've given God that, and, and, the, and the nice thing for families especially is when the kids see that, then the kids see those graces that come. I mean, one of the biggest blessings is that our children – have seen over and over again God providing for our family, whether it was through a nice neighbor or someone at church or you know, we have things like Free Cycle and, you know, Marketplace and Amazon, you know, people give away stuff all the time. So they see that, you know, instead of the difference between the wants and the needs, we're t hopefully teaching them. And we've, we only have six kids living at home now and have launched eight, and we hope, <laughs> so far so good, uh, we hope our kids learn to appreciate and not expect. So when, you, when we go to the beach, you know, they appreciate the fact that we are actually on vacation as a family. We're on the beach enjoying the beach. They don't expect to, you know, go to get donuts every day, go to mentor golf, go to the movie theater, or the water slide or the rides, you know, that if we do do some of those things or if somebody in our family takes them, then it's like, wow, we're so appreciative and so happy. It's not like, well, that wasn't a fun vacation because we didn't go mentor golfing. That's never expected. Like, what's a, you know, so teaching them those priorities and teaching them those um, simplicity in life and appreciation of what they are given and so, so far, so good. We have nine grandchildren and four married, and 
very financially responsible children. Very grateful for that. That is a gift. Uh, well, you know, we didn't clarify in the beginning of this podcast that, um, Sam, you know, a lot of times people think that to have a big family means you need to be a multi, multi millionaire, right? Like, you know, sometimes <laughs> even strangers have stopped me in the grocery store and like, how much money does your husband make? And you're like, uh, I don't even know you because, you know, they, they, they naturally make this equation, right? Big family. And that, and I only have seven. You have 14 children that you're raising plus helping grandchildren. So maybe talk a little bit about it's not always, you know, in the money, like you mentioned. Yes. Well, I, I, you know, I was brought up, you you didn't talk about stuff like money and politics and all those things. (laughs) Oh, those were the days, right? (laughs) Before social media. Well, when my husband told me 12 years ago that he paid off our house, I was just dumbfounded. I I was just in shock. I had no idea he was doing this. You know, little by little, he was paying off month by month. He has a very simple job. We owned a Christian bookstore for 10 years right after we got married. He was, he's a software tester. You know, it wasn't until about 15 years ago that he actually finally, you know, doubled his salary because he made a substantial salary as opposed to barely making it for so many years. But we just, the, the goal was we just lived the same. So when he finally got a job and was getting, you know, more um, recognition in his field because he started off as a newbie after we had our own business, he just, someone offered him this job and trained him on, you know, on site. So he started learning. So once he started making more money, we just kept living the same way. And we've never made a lot. We've always made enough. And I'm appreciative of that. But like I said, he kept putting away money little by little, and I didn't know this. So when he, you know, handed me this piece of paper, I had no idea what it was. And he's like, I paid our house off. And I was like, what? Because I'm the youngest of nine. And I remember my family and what a big deal that was. You know, I remember on the phone that was attached to the wall in our house, our only phone we owned, you know, had this sign that said, God bless our mortgage home. And, you know, it was just the way things were. And then when someone paid their house off, it was kind of like, you know, invite the whole town over, let's, you know, kill the fatted calf and have a huge party. So when Rob said this, I was just like overwhelmed with pride not the bad, not the bad kind of pride, but I did. I wanted to, you know, my husband's very private, very shy and very quiet. And I am the extreme extrovert. You can't shut me up, but you know, I wanted to tell people and I was so grateful when we got to do this article. I was so grateful when Ave Maria pressed us to write this book because I don't want to tell people because I think I'm better than you or we're smarter than you. I want to tell people because I want people to know that when they're making these these hopes, these dreams, these goals, that they too can do the impossible. Have 14 children and pay your house off, live debt free. I mean, that's impossible in today's world. We live in the Washington D.C. area. It's an expensive area to live in. You know, we want people to know that with God, all things are possible. And if you just chip away, and I always say, you know, it's great being Catholic. <laughs> we were writing this book not only during the pandemic, but during Lent when there's lots of suffering and lots of sacrificing. So, you know, we have learned to offer things up. And, and you know, I, I won't get that chai tea after my workout. I'm going to offer it up for my marriage. I'm not going to go to McDonald's with the kids. We're going to take that money and share it with a family in our parish who just adopted a third child with special needs. So like we are going to utilize these small sacrifices to help others. And our kids have seen it firsthand. We, we, you know, in the early days, we were always so blessed. And, And now I, now that I have these older kids, you know, I always tell them, you know, make sure you bless others. And they have all kind of found their own, um, favorite, you know, ministry to share and to tithe for. My oldest son is a focused missionary, and that was so easy for him to make that decision after he graduated from college because he graduated debt-free. He didn't have to say, oh, I don't really want to give up two years or three years. Ended up to be 
six years, <laughs> and still he still is, and he still is a focus missionary. But he didn't say, "Oh, I, I can't offer this year or two of service because I have all this college debt." And you know, he was willing to make those sacrifices of you know commuting to college, living from home those last two years, um, going to community college the first two years. So they have all learned to hopefully from the way we raise them to also share their blessings and you don't have to be a millionaire to live debt free. You don't have to be a millionaire to have, you know, five kids like the world tells you. Amen. That is awesome. Well, you are listening to inspired by faith, the program of the Columbus Catholic women's conference. I'm Michelle Fanley and I'm in the studio today with Emily Jaminette and we're talking with Sam Fatsinger about spending less and living more. Now, Sam, I know one of my biggest faults with money is what my husband likes to call my discretionary spending. You know, you stop at the grocery store to pick up a gallon of milk, and then the next thing you walk out with $100 worth of stuff. And, uh, you know, as my husband always says, that's, you know, $100 we don't have anymore. So I liked how you talked about intentional spending in the book. So can you share a little bit about what that means to our listeners? Again, it's going to be, you know, what you're what your goals are. It, it's easier not to spend, you know, my husband always says shop the outside of the grocery store. Now we are very blessed. We have Lidl, we have Aldi, and we actually canceled our big box stores. You know, we have BJ's and Sam's Club and um, around here. And we canceled those memberships because I was doing that and I was buying these things because you think, oh gosh, especially in the days when we had, you know, 12 at home at the same time. You know, I was buying these huge things of, you know, ranch dressing and all the things. But when all the open, I started watching my spending and comparing, and I was saving so much more money going to Aldi, not only on the basics, but on all those tempting things that I, you know, that I was spending. But when you are intentionally spending, it helps you when you have a goal. So especially people who are trying to get out of debt. So whether it's debt, or a vacation, or a new car, or, you know, I know it sounds funny to say a baby, but I have so many friends who be like, who are say, oh, I would love to have another baby, but my husband doesn't think we can afford it. And I'm like, well, why does he say that? I mean, maybe you shouldn't go out and get your nails done every month, or maybe you shouldn't, you know, go to the fancy hair salon. Maybe you shouldn't do all that online spending. Like, if you really want these things, a new car, a new house, whatever, a vacation, then you need to start chopping away at the things you can. That's where spending less and living more is. You're going to spend less on groceries so that you can afford private school. You're going to spend less on your hair so that you can, um, you know, get that new car. You're going to spend less on, you know, your house, your your furnishings in your house or your, you know, getting new new, uh curtains or bed spreads. You're going to save money there so that you can maybe go on vacation. So intentional spending in my, in my thought is not spending somewhere so that you can either pay off your debt or pay for something that your family needs or wants. So again, it's that, that season of life you're in, you know, whether it's, uh, kids going, you know, I, I think a big one is school, especially right now. Um, our son went to a private school during uh, last year during COVID because the public schools were going all online and he has um, special needs and I couldn't have him home five days a week trying to do online school. That was against everything that his brain could possibly handle. And so, you know, we had to adjust our, you know, our spending and our, the way we lived so that we can make this better choice for him. Again, it's every year is a new, a new time. Every kid has different needs. You know, hospital bills are a huge shocker and surprise. Um, we had a, a out-of-state wedding that we all had, 14 of us had to fly to Arizona for one of the most amazing trips of our life. But we had to readjust and, and thank God that my husband had saved money that that trip was enjoyable. It didn't put us in this major... Um, hard time in our budget. So um, intentional spending usually in my, in my mind is when you are, have something that you want to buy, but you're going to learn other ways to save so that you can spend that. 
Well, and, you know, as I hear you, Sam, talking about this, you know, it also brings light to that idea of spiritual sacrifice, you know, that it's redemptive to to say no to something for a higher purpose, especially, you know, when when we do it with the intention of of wanting to serve the Lord. So I, I think that's such a beautiful connection that you're making and and you're really giving us, you know, small examples because sometimes you need to just exchange small things, you know, such as okay, I'm not going to get my nails done. I can start there. You know, sometimes you got to build that, that, um, you know, that snowball of change. And Michelle and I have talked about this for years, you know, just take out coffee. Like, and you mentioned it as same, like if I just don't go through the drive through and get that one cup of coffee, you know, we're talking about $5 and 20 cents. Well, $5 and 20 cents times one is small, but let's say I did that every week and then every week, you know, compoundly through the year. So some things, you know, just extending, if this pattern continued, what does that look like for a whole year? You know, and then you can start to see, maybe this is something that the Lord's calling me to cut out and brew my coffee at home or do, you know, do what not. But yet um, there's a season for fasting and there's a season for feasting. So I know Michelle just got back from vacation, right, Michelle? Yes, we did. And, it, and we do, we save for our vacation so we can enjoy it. And, you know, and, you know, Emily and I actually, Emily got me hooked on to Aldi probably 15 years ago because my sister was getting <clears throat> married in Tobago and there was no way I could fly our family of four, uh, you know, on this huge wedding trip like you had. And I had to cut my budget t- significantly. T- and the only place I could cut it was in the food. So we ate simply for a year, but we, it was so worth it. You know, I'm um, saying I, our, our, our church is so into fasting now. So I tell people, You know, fasting doesn't have to be, you know, bread and water. It could be, you know, you know, choosing to go to a different store, choosing to try to cut back in some things. It gives you hope too, right? Because it's such an out of control feeling when things do start to spiral in the wrong direction with building debt. So um, understanding, do you have any other, you know, like a closing, any closing tips if people are just beginning this uh, budgeting or anything that would um, be a a good starting plan, especially in light of our Catholic faith and um, raising 14 children? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, again, raising one is hard. So it's just a matter of learning with your your spouse or your family doing what's best for your family. Now, on our website, which is fatsam.com, you can get three chapters for free. They're downloadable. One's about how we do college, one's how we do weddings, and one's how we feed our family. And those were three of our favorite chapters that we that wouldn't fit in the book because, again, I write like I talk, lots, lots, and lots. And so those were free. And they have, you know, in our book, one of our favorite parts of our book has all our older seven children all shared something. And that was almost my favorite part, hearing what they had to say. Um, real quick to close off, I'll say to remember my name is Sam. And S is for saving and sacrificing and simplifying and suffering. A is for asking for help. Ask God to help you, whether it's making a budget or plan. Ask others to help you. So I always tell people, you know, before you buy those roller skates or that new bike, ask, you know, your neighbors, your family, because nine chances out of ten, your neighbor down the street's been tripping over that skateboard every time they go to get their car, and they'd be like, please take this. And I don't know about you, but I have nine sons. And so we have this incredible disease of want versus needs. And they're like, I want rollerblades. I want hockey stick. I want a skateboard. I want, you know, lacrosse equipment. And so instead of buying that every week, we just kind of all swap it around and we share it. So that's what asking for help. And, of course, asking the saints and, and our ladies in our session. And M is just making a plan. Make a plan, whether it's a budget or uh, I say make do. M is for making do with what you already have. You know, do you really need a new bedspread? What's wrong with the one you have? Do you really need new shoes, which I'm staring at a pile of my summer shoes here. But <laughs> you really need new shoes. You know, make do with what you have. And I'm a huge thrifter. So as you girls know, <laughs> that's what I did when I was in Ohio. But, you know, look for things. If, you you know, your kids will learn to appreciate um, the new pair of shoes you get them instead of expecting the brand new shoes, you know, from the very expensive store. So I hope that helps. And if anybody wants to ask me any specific questions, it's hard to talk about money because we all have such different uh, crosses to bear, but you can reach me on social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook. 
Well, thank you, Sam. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we hope you're back in Columbus sometime soon. Me too. God bless. <laughs> it was so nice talking to you. God bless. Bye-bye. Oh, that was great. It was. She is such a delight. It was so fun to meet her in person. It was. And, you know, I think she just challenges us in a different way, right? I mean, to think about sometimes it's just even growing in gratitude for what you do have, right? Because a lot of times we don't appreciate what we have and we can expect. Look, yeah, like we can she said, expect. I'm like, can I like, get that tattooed on my forehead so my kids can see that? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was a good line. Well, like she wrote, I think this is a beautiful way to, to end the show today. She wrote, resist the temptation to hoard your money. Do not be afraid. You won't have enough if he gives them away. It's not yours in the first place. It's just on loan for you to use for the Lord's purposes. So I thought that was a really beautiful way to, to think about our money is that it's not ours in the first place. And it's it's from God. So let's close in prayer, Emily. Let's do it. And Father and Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we offer thanks for the many gifts you have given us, financial gifts and talent gifts. We pray that we become more aware of every good thing you have that comes from you. Help us to be cheerful givers, offering what we have to others and out of love for you. Help us to surrender our attachment to our possessions. Free us from our obsessions with things. Open our eyes to the true treasures that you have given us. We offer you our, our finances, our personal finances, our family finances. Give us in the ways of money and let your Holy Spirit transform our hearts into hearts of charity. We offer you all of our talents and skill. Inspire us with ways that we may use our abilities to better serve you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And thank you for joining us today on Inspired by Faith. We hope you are blessed and inspired by this episode. To find more out about the Columbus Catholic Women's Conference, visit ColumbusCatholicWomen.com. And to hear more about Emily and my work, be sure to check out InspireTheFaith.com. God bless.